Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Fierce Honest Hearts. I am uh, Heidi Ferguson, and in pink is Fidista Ramsey, and we have our second male guest. Today it is, hello, Peter, Peter Castris, and um, yeah, we're just, we're all excited to be here. So typically we start with a check-in, and I'm happy to go first unless you want to check in, Peter. That's okay, too. Um, Fire away, Heidi. Okay. So I've been in a much more playful and lighter place, which I'm really enjoying and reveling in because it's been a while. I've been um, in this kind of cycle of anxiety, which I think most of you know about that have been listening. And so it feels different. And I'm really glad to be in this different space. And what I want to share, what, the other thing that I want to share is that, um, you know, I, I've been re-watching some older movies and one of those is um, Something's Gotta Give with uh, Diane Keaton and and uh, Jack Nicholson. And I, I, like Jack at his height was, when he does comedy, he's just wonderful and lovely and light and sweet. And he and Diane, the way they play off each other and her, her vulnerability and her laughter and her kind of quirkiness, I just... I, I love that so much. And I realize that I want more of that in my life. I need more lightness in my life. So, you know, bring on the humor and I'm going to work on bringing on my own humor. And then the other thing that I wanted to share is that earlier today, there's this photo that goes around the internet. It's of this, this little Yorkshire Terrier whose hair is standing on end. It's just silly. It's really funny. And so I wrote a, a newsletter today because it reminds me of myself when I straighten my hair. And in this really drier weather, my hair stands on end like that. And I have this moment where I can really laugh at myself and I'm like, oh my God, this just feels so good to not take myself so seriously. And I'm loving myself more in that vein. And like I said a few moments ago, really wanting more of that, bringing more of that into my life. So. Um, yeah, just it feels different. It feels lighter, and I'm I'm loving it. So that's my check in. Right on. I'll go next. Cool. Can you hear me? Oh, good. All right. So, uh, man, something's got to give. What a great film. I'm not usually a huge. Jack Nicholson fan, but that film I thought really worked. I was really into the characters in that. I love Diane Keaton's part in there, and I love how they they spiraled together in the end. It just they never gave up, and I can really identify with that. Um, I've been feeling uh, lately. I've been feeling really in my body in a really positive way. I've been very uh, very cognizant about. And it, I was speaking with Fresta about this, about playing golf lately, which was never a thing for me in my life, but how it's really flowed into this, into this like feeling of, of being really in my body and in like almost like a Zen state at times. Um, the flow has been, and the spirit of it all. And I, and like this, um, it's like a, um, it's like the opposite of what you'd expect. You'd expect to be more powerful and that would be more successful, but I find that letting go is more powerful for this, really letting go and letting the flow be. So that's been really great, except for today, <laughs> because last night, I don't know what it is. I just, I was so tired. And I didn't, I didn't sleep well, and that's unusual for me. So I guess rhythmically, I was just off last night. I watched the State of the Union, which I kind of liked, and, and then uh, I just couldn't get to sleep. So I was feeling really, really tired um, and not in my body and in my normal, what has been really normal lately, has been to feel really positive and really in my body in such a good way. And just today, no. So didn't really have it today, but 
here I am and I'm happy. So very grateful. Um, so that's my check-in right now. I'm a little tired, but I'm very grateful to be me. I still am. So going through the rhythms and the ups and the downs, it's okay. You know, it happens. I have like four or five of these per year, clunker sleep nights. So it's good to see you both. I'm grateful to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. I'm feeling really touched by your share, just the vulnerability of being like, ah, not feeling the best today. And I love that you're modeling still to have gratitude, even when it's feeling crunchy or crunky, you know, those days that come for all of us humans. Um, and I'd love to hear more. I think I, I'd love to dive into this in our conversation too, around kind of the surprising gifts of golf for you. Uh, when you shared what it does for you, it's not what I would expect of golf. And I think I've written golf off as being pretty tedious looking and boring personally. So it, it's refreshing to hear that it brings some gifts to your world and to your being in the world um, but I wouldn't have guessed so I'd love to dive into that deeper and relating because I just did my first Pilates class um, with my dear friend Amanda yesterday she was the instructor and I was the student and boy do I think I'm uncoordinated and kind of klutzy in general and here were things I had to do and was doing well with a lot of balance and grace um, kind of dispelling some stories I tell about myself. So that was really interesting. And then how much more in my body I was after that hour, more than I usually am. I think I can be a bit up and ethereal. And this was like, whoa, I have legs and my legs feel strong and they're rooted to the ground. And this feels anchoring and rooted and steadying and created stillness in my mind that I wasn't anticipating and just an all over win. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm understanding this mind body connection a little bit myself. Very new, right? I'm chewing on it from last night, but what a gift it can be to get into flow through the body versus trying to get into the flow mentally. Um, yeah, less forcing and more more um allowing more yielding so i appreciate that so that was part of my check-in anyway and that feels like the big one i'm working with body image i'm working with health um i'm working with let's say decolonizing my mind around you know society's beauty standards and and connecting to the strength i already have um so it's, it feels big, even though it's Pilates, right? Like it could seem like it's just a class to go to, but it feels bigger than that for me. And I'm not quite sure why, but I'm sensing that. I'm sensing there's a real healing possibility and, and probability from just taking that step. So I'm excited and grateful too. Yeah. Thank you both for your shares and for opening those doors. Um, I'm really appreciating this grounding into your body, this concept, this truth of what that is for both of you. And, um, and you know, you're talking about the Pilates, this, this exercise of Pilates. I've never done it, but I've seen it. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my God, how can some, how can the human body do these things? Because that machine looks pretty intense and the things that one does on the machine, I'm like, wow, that's, it's, to me, it's impressive. So, um, but I do, I, I really feel like in every experience, in everything that we do in our lives, there's more depth to it, right? In, in every experience that we have. So I'm, I'm, um, Really appreciating that. So, um, so Peter, I'm. I just want to open it up and ask you. Um, we just realized a few weeks ago that you're watching us, <laughs> that you're following us, and I'm curious what 
like, what got you there? Like, what was it? What is it that you find? Yeah, just share. I'm curious to know what is it that you are interested in? What is it that you are um, finding relatable in our conversations? Yeah. Honesty. Um, I love that you're both living your title. So I've gotten to know Farasta a bit. And, uh, you know, it's just, it jives right with, with what I, with who I met. And now she's attracting a person similar to herself who's also fierce and open and honest. So that's what has been attractive for me. So I just like that you're both, I, I like the unstructured uh, uh, nature of this as well. I think you're just having a con an open conversation about what comes up and what's real for you and alive for you in that moment. So that's what's attractive to me. Mm. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Peter. Yeah, really um, receiving that and also wanting to reflect that back to you as someone who I've experienced as deeply genuine and open and willing to, to share. So um, yeah, I feel like now there's three of us in the mix yeah. wanting for and having values towards the same thing. Feels really good to me. Yeah. And I'd love to just ask you as well, you know, because we haven't had, let's say as many male viewers and, and you're one of our male guests, like what about honesty and relationships matters to you? Like, why does it matter for you? in your life, in your relationships? And are you, um, say like, is that what you lead with? And just to see how others show up, is that, is that how you do it? I believe my, the language I respond to best is, um, is really being with someone. So I'll just kind of connect it with another another piece of the check-in which is really being with my parents lately um, my parents are both in their 80s and you know the honesty um, really being with somebody really connecting um, beyond surfaces uh, surfacey stuff is just fun and fine I also feel very light and airy I'm very silly I like that but I also have an intensity and that's very attractive to me. Uh, when people just cut through the veneer, you know, Janis Joplin used to say, uh, it's not just a performance, you know, it's a moment with you. And I thought she really embodied that. And that's what you were explaining about Pilates there. Um, I've been, I've become involved with, um, I'm not sure if you're aware of uh, the whole embodiment movement. Um, there's a whole group of people online that are connecting and dancing uh, daily, weekly. It's like a big deal. You know, you might have gone to ecstatic dances or things like that, barefoot boogies. So I've become quite involved with that. And being in the body has been, has been really rewarding for me. So that's the attraction is, is really just coming back to the honesty. And I believe that's, that's the biggest piece for me is that it's really a moment with you instead of like, Hey, what's going on? Like, what are you doing? More like, how are you feeling? Uh, what's going on? What's really going on? You know, not just words. So. Yeah, that's so beautifully said because I think of performance as a musician, but I also think of the moments that matter most to me is when someone is being with me and I'm being with them. And I find a lot of depletion when it's light and airy. I've got maybe some biases there I have to work with. Um, I'd love to know how to hold both. And maybe I do in a way, but I, I notice my own intensity more. Um, but I love this idea of it's a moment to be with someone. And I don't know about you, Heidi, you know, we've talked about this, like, when someone's not being with us, they're just kind of skipping on the surface. It can feel challenging. Would that uh -huh. be the right word? Yeah. 
Yeah, certainly challenging. And I find, I find what, what I do in those moments is first of all, I feel exhausted. I, I find that I get exhausted pretty quickly with, I'm going to call it BS for short of, for lack of a other term. And I'm like, and, and then my brain goes, well, what else is there? Like, I want to know more. I want to know you. I want to know more about you. So what else is there? And then, and I also have this awareness that not everyone's willing to go there. Not everyone has the capacity, the willingness. And so to have, to have the awareness around it, but also to, to, com- to have compassion for those people who've only done X amount of work on themselves, right? And, and to know that there's the possibility and the capability, they, they could have it. And for whatever reason, they're making another choice. Um, I have to, I, I have to mentally let that go and, and grieve it. And in a sense, I grieve that because, you know, I'm hoping there's more and I'm sure that there is, but there, there's not a willingness to, to do that. So I find that exhausting. And then I also find myself you know, when, when I begin to move forward and I'm getting to know someone and sharing more of myself, if that is not reciprocated, I'm going to definitely hold back because there's this trust that I have that I'm, if I'm going to, you know, share with someone and we've talked about this, you know, many times, but if, if it's not reciprocated, I'm gonna, I'm not, I, I'm not feeling the trust. So therefore I'm going to retreat a little bit. Like that's my scorpion tail for sure. It's going to retreat. And uh, yeah, because I have, I've been the person who has reached out and moved beyond and, and with hopes that this person will share more and they don't. And I'm like, Oh, it's, it's almost heartbreaking. I'm like, Oh, okay. All right. And I have to let it grow and I have to grieve it, but it's, it, it is what it is. Like it's what's right in front of me. And I think it's Maya Angelou who said, and of course, Oprah's repeated it millions of times, which is when someone shows you who they are the first time, believe them. And it doesn't mean that they can't change. It doesn't mean they won't change, but if they're not bringing themselves, maybe now is not the time. Yeah. Going back to the, uh, thank you for sharing that because it really, it really spurs a few things for me. <laughs> um, going back to the paradox of the golf thing, where letting go in order to connect deeper, which I think is pretty, pretty well known, you know, concept where you do have to let go at times. So it seems opposite instead of trying to control. But the whole letting go thing, I find I drop the ball at times. In what you were just speaking about, Heidi, you crave that intensity and that connection and and that being real, maybe not intensity, but you had said being real and really having a moment with somebody, really connecting out. And then when that falls short, you know, maybe the trust may not be there. And, uh, you know, you might even feel a little disappointment. Uh, I know I do. So, but what I'm finding, and this is this is the really good part, is that again, it's not about for me when I demand it, no good. Instead, I've just been with someone, loving them where they are. And I don't always hit the mark every time on that, but I'm really cognizant of that, of just loving them where they are. So that way, attraction, instead of asking for, I mean, it's okay to be clear about what you want, but I believe in really living it. So that goes back to the golf thing, you know, I'm in my body, meaning I'm not up here trying to direct it, just letting the wisdom speak. And hopefully that that echoes back. So thank mm. you for sharing that, Heidi, because I really 
came up for me. <laughs> I feel I, I'm a cancer, so I do like to connect on an emotional level. Yeah. And if that's not there. I feel like, ooh, I'm not going to, I'm going to hide in, the, in my shell. I'm going to, I'm the cancer. So I'll shell up when I feel like it's not. And really, I need to just be, like, just be what I want, be the change. Right. Right. I'm really <laughs> loving the words. Um, what you said around wisdom. Really connecting to that and feeling it really in the depths of my soul and my heart. And I'm like, wow, that. And, I, and I'm feeling, even in this moment, feeling more grounded in myself because I know that I have a lot of, I know that I have a lot of wisdom and I'm not trying to do my own horn, but I'm like, wow, just to revel in that and also ground deeper in it, my knowing, my intuition, my trust with myself. Um, and then the other thing, you know, being loving a person where they are and letting go of expectations. And that is something that I've been working on for the last several years um, with someone in my life. And it's been a lifelong journey, a lifelong, you know, experience. And God, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm just like feeling a little tight and I'm like, okay, you can do this. Um, cause this feels really vulnerable to say this, but when I, when I figure it out that it's better to simply love her where she is in the, in the longevity of her life. And we've had this lifelong relationship and, and all this stuff and neither of us have been perfect, but until I realized that. I'm the one that has to do the work to make change. I have to change myself in order for this relationship to be anything close to what I want it to be. That's using my wisdom. It's using my self-trust. It's using my intuition, all of those things. Um, and how much better off humanity, I'm gonna just speak for humanity. Yes, this is a general statement, everyone who's listening, but how much better off we would all be if we simply listened, really listened to the depths of ourselves and received ourselves in those places so that we can, the ripple effect, right? The tentacles that go out to the world. Um, ah, yeah. Loving this conversation very much. Didn't realize we were going to go to these places, but it's so <laughs> yummy. <laughs> yeah. And you're both having me connect to this growth opportunity, let's call it, this place I've been working where instead of getting into that little bit of tantrumy, bratty energy, that like this person's not bringing depth and intensity and, you know, my expectations, my values, right? Um, I've been getting better at asking curious questions, right? That's been one frame. It's like, I hear something and I reflect back I say, oh, it sounds like that was really comforting for you, right? And and maybe the most they can do, these are dear loved ones I can't necessarily <laughs> walk away from, being like, oh, yeah, yeah, it was comforting, right? That might be as far as we get. But at least I'm I'm being curious instead of tantrumy about it. And it opens up this place, like, let's say the whole conversation feels surfacy to me. But if all I'm focusing on, because I think my focus is a part of it too, if all I'm focusing on is, oh, we're just talking, you know, doing the meadow report versus I can still feel this person's love for me, even though they might keep things more on the surface, or I appreciate their laughter or memories of how this person's had my back in the past, right? Like I can bring all of this other awareness to the conversation that actually lets me feel like I'm connecting versus just focusing on the fact that they're not bringing depth. I can cultivate depth, even if the conversation isn't, let's say my favorite place. Um, that's been new 
that's felt like personal responsibility to me to not just bemoan it and, you know, complain about it, but to be like, how could I make this juicier for me, for us? And then how could I stop focusing on the one thing that's not happening? And look at all, like we made time for each other. We're laughing with each other. We're making eye contact. We're being present and focused. There's all the stuff that's happening that I can totally miss if I get myopic on the one thing that's not happening, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It Famous makes, for that. <laughs> yeah, it completely makes yeah. sense. And I would be curious if you would share a little bit more about your process around that. So maybe an example of a couple of the questions that you might be asking out of curiosity to the person that you are having this conversation with mm -hmm. yeah I mean at first I was just harnessing my frustration right like why does this matter why is this person telling me this by really articulating like what about what you just shared matters to you or what's most meaningful there for you that you want me to see like you told this whole story and then I'm also being an emotional detective of like am I can I glean values this person has just by what they're sharing right? And then reflect that back. It sounds like you really value efficiency, right? Or it sounds like you really value um, like clear communication, right? So maybe it's not coming out of their mouth, but I'm really trying to track them in a way where I can maybe share something that they would come to with support, I guess. But yeah, what's ma what matters to you is one of the questions. What's meaningful, you know, with with Peter, for example, what's what's been a gift of golf that you didn't expect, right? Like just these ways of I think our questions matter, honestly. It's like how was work or what was inspiring about your day? Like those are two different energies in a conversation. You know, what did you learn today is different than how was school. And I think we have in this society gotten very casual. How was school? How was work? How's your homework? Versus what did you learn from your homework? I learned that I procrastinate, <laughs> like whatever. Um, yeah, I think there's something I'm feeling around asking good questions. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, hmm. Speaking of good questions, I'm I'm working on conjuring up a good question for Peter. Let's see. Um, oh, so I really want to know um, about your own personal. I'm I'm using the term personal growth, like your journey of personal growth, because. You didn't come out of the womb this way. Nobody does, right? <laughs> Maybe, but I'm going to assume that you haven't. Um, so I'm just curious if you would share a little bit of that, if if that feels okay to you, as much as you want to share. Um, yeah, that's my question. Sure. Well, um, my view is, and I really believe. Have you ever? Um, you ever read Marianne Williamson? One of the books that I really, really connected with in my, my early 30s, it was a big piece for me, was called A Return to Love. And what really resonated for me was that it was, so when you said came out of the womb that way, Heidi, I believe I came out of the womb in, the womb in my best state. And the journey has been to return to love. And that all that moss that we gather in life, all that hurt, all that stuff, that's the stuff of life. And the journey is inward, you know, inward to be outward. So in my history, um, 
you know, that, that search for connection has led to drug addiction, recovery now for 32 years, um, very, very difficult divorce where I really threw my heart into it full, full bore. That was in 19, um, in 1997, um, 98, when it, and that's about the time I discovered the Mara and Williamson soon after that, because I always knew there was something great, but that for me was so connecting. Um, you know, the, uh, I, I lose the plot sometimes. <laughs> I think I have the, uh, I think I have the knowledge, but that's the booby prize in life. It's the application that uh, that really really is is where the juice is. It's how you're applying it. So being silly, that's like my greatest asset is the silliness. Um, you know, because I am an intense character. I know I am. I'm positive. Uh, but I'm feeling the best when I'm silly, when I'm in my body, I'm connecting with friends, when I'm really just with somebody. These are the moments that I feel the best. And I feel like there's something I want to say. Um, I've talked to my, speaking of losing the plot, um, I don't know if it's because my, because I retired. I, I'm, I'm a lifelong teacher. I taught fifth and sixth grade for 31 years in Ordell Public School. Loved it. I mean, loved it. Um, wasn't just a job. Uh, it was a daily connection. It was just incredible, like fruits of my labor right before my eyes every day. Um, loved it. Um, and in retirement now, this retirement thing I'm doing, I'm only 58 and a half, but I've kind of lost the plot of like the meaning of life. I've talked to this with my partner and it's like, at times I've just been like, what's the meaning? I, I don't know if you've experienced this, but I feel like I'm like, it's kind of a surreal, like what's going on? I'm not quite getting the plot. And then I come back. Like, I don't know why I, I can't even explain it. And it's kind of, I'm, I apologize almost for bringing it up, but I lose like what's going on like, in life. I think it's because I'm not working. I'm not productive in the way I was. I've had to create a whole new paradigm for my life. So waking up with no, I'm not fully answering your question, Heidi, but uh, that's where it took me right now. Um, so with my partner, I've been, you know, we've had our struggles through the years, yet my, my happiest place is looking in her eyes. You know, that's like my happiest place. And yet we don't always get there because of what, what we've been talking about, uh, which is you know, me trying to force things that aren't there, me not loving her where she is. So yeah, a little meandering answer there, but uh, there you go. <laughs> I find it really powerful, the meandering, because I'm hearing your life journey and, and the places where you um, worked with your shadows, let's say, and then the places you found some light. Right. And then I think I read something speaking to retirement about the two vulnerable times in our lives as humans is the first year we're born and the first year we retire. And there's something to that liminal ambigu ambig ambiguous, <laughs> is that the right word? Sounds um, right. Surreal, floaty place where some identity has been dissolved right? You're always going to have the heart of a teacher, but like you're not doing that in the classroom every day. So it makes perfect sense to me that you'd be losing the plot and floating around and that even this, this is part of your growth journey. It's like, you know, can I love myself when I've lost the plot, <laughs> right? Or can I love myself when I didn't sleep well or when I got anxious about the thing or yeah. Can I return to love anyway is sort of my headline. <laughs> so, yeah. And I think you're speaking to a lot of people who find themselves on the other side of retirement, trying to 
build a new, figure that out. Yeah. That feels that feels tender to me. We don't talk about that enough. Yeah. So thank you. And I've always sensed such bright energy from you, but an awareness of some intense, um, like you don't get to this place without some steep climbing, you know, some heavy lifting. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. Thank you. I wanted to add too, you know, in our life's journey, our plot is changing all the time. Like we are not this, we are not linear. It's, it's just not who we are it, and it's not possible. And so in this roller coaster of life, every day we have to figure out and reconfigure who we are because we are changing literally every moment of every day. And it's so interesting because as I'm saying this out loud to you, Peter, <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding up the mirror. I'm like, who are you today, Heidi? Like, who are you? And so to answer that, I, I, I don't, I don't, in all honesty, I don't know that I can answer that every day. I mean, I can say I'm Heidi Ferguson, but at the crux of it and in the depth, who really am I? Because I have days where I really struggle with that answer and coming to that answer and, and, and finding myself. Because there are days when I'm just floundering, I'm floating, I'm like, what is happening? Um, and I'm not in my body. But when we, when I am in my body, which we've all talked about, is when I feel solid and empowered and also my most gentle self, my most confident self, um, and, and my most able to be present with the people that I'm with, like you two right now. I feel like this is one of the most beautiful moments I've had, you know, in, in a week mm -hmm. since our last podcast. But I mean, it's just really lovely to be present, like to be present with our brothers and sisters in life. In, in my opinion, I don't think there's anything better than that. It's just, it's such a gift and such an answer to prayer, to hope, to, the things that I think we need in life um, as humans. I mean, this is how I want to relate every day of my life. This is what I want. And uh, so if we can bring it as humans, let's bring it. Yeah, that's why we're here. We're asking people to get on the train, you know, <laughs> with yeah, us. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, the dance I, too, you know, like the, I'm sorry to cut you off. Go first. Ahead. Yeah, oh, go ahead. Was, that just brings me to the dance again. Because, you know, that's what we're here to do. Mm -hmm. We're here to support others and give and to be of service. Um, but I believe we're here to dance, too, <laughs> and yeah. to really, really connect, you know, and that's and dancing can be take on multiple meanings. Sure. That's when I'm playing my best golf when I'm dancing. That's when I'm mm -hmm. being the best uh, partner when I'm dancing, because that's who I really am. Yeah. So I hear flexibility too and adaptability and pivoting and responsiveness, responsiveness. Embodying who you are. So. Mm. Well, thank you for that. I had a question pop up. So I'm wondering, um, since we have Peter here and you know we can get a male perspective, I would certainly love to give that gift to us as women and then also to our audience. Um, I think of when we come into this life, right? Certain lampshades are kind of, there were this big bright light of consciousness, let's say, as you said, in the womb. And then lampshades get put on, whether it's the fear of the mother, the culture, the, the religion, like lampshade, 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 right? And the work is often taking those lampshades off throughout our life. And I'm wondering for you as a man specifically, are you able to describe the kind of lampshade that might be the male experience specific to men? Rephrase that. What are the conditionings that you as a male have experienced that you'd want, you know, women, your partner, your friends to know is 
is there or that we can be tender towards, I suppose? What comes up for me is, uh, is certain male stereotypes that I don't, I don't really adhere to. Um, like I want to be, I want to adhere to certain ones, but the thing that pops up to, for me is, uh, is just this, um, I'm not, I'm not really fully, totally getting the question, but what pops up for me is, uh, um, in my own growth is, uh, the fear that I've experienced in my life. That's been the most painful piece is the fear. So that's the lamp. That's a big lampshade, um, because it's really, um, it's really got me going, you know, from assault. I had near death experience. Um, um, I've had a drowning. Um, I've also been shut down at times. Um, so that, I think I do have that cancer, you know, characteristic of really shelling up at times when I feel, when I feel attacked. So the male stereotype would be to, fight through that you know to uh you know that that kind of conditioning and eh whatever you know move move through it and there's certain merit to that but I get when I feel it here like kind of just below my heart like right in here that's that's the the most difficult and I've gone to therapy for this and it's helped a lot but that's the piece. I can't just move through it up here. Like I need that connection to feel, uh, to feel like I can move forward. So, um, you know, I, I've had some fear in my life and I, I think it's from these traumatic incidences, you know, we're supposed to move through this. We're not supposed to talk about it our whole life, you know, but it prevents me from dancing. So at times when I get caught in that fear, so that stereotypical view of how we should get through it uh, as a man doesn't yeah. work for me. Yeah, the suck it up, man up, whatever awful sort of dismissive, I'm going to call it dismissive approaches. So yeah, I felt the lack, I felt that, yeah, I felt like I don't connect. People don't get to see me in those moments where I'm feeling fearful. Because hmm. I'm hiding. Yeah. Well, thank you for not hiding here. I really appreciate you for bringing that. Well, I, and, I, in my discuss, in my listening to both of you, I, I've come to care about you both. You, uh, mm. you both seem so just genuine and honest. So, I love that. So, mm -hmm. I feel thank very you. safe talking to both of you, and to our audience. <laughs> yeah. and I just, I just want to hold a tender moment for the masculine and for. The men this is going to resonate with who have been told they have to show up a different, you know, a certain way when their feelings are on the line. And I just continue to say, like, what if you just get to be human, right? And scared and in your shell and and self-protective. Like, I know I do that. I totally do that but I haven't gotten your messaging. And that's why it's so important, I think, to name the messaging men get because it might not be in our awareness as women. We get our own messaging, but it's not that. So thank you for just opening that up. And Heidi, I want to leave you space too in case there's some reflections. Yeah, I, I, I'm just feeling so much tenderness for your care for us. I... I don't know if I've ever heard those words before. So thank you. Just a simple thank you. Um, and I think that, you know, you sharing the way that you're sharing in this beautiful, beautiful vulnerability is there. I, I'm, I'm feeling the strength in that, even though you may not see it that way. I see it as incredible strength and to be able to name that, you know, the times that you have experienced this fear and that it does still come up and it's, it is a lifelong journey, Peter. It really is for everybody. And 
no matter how much work we've done, how much, how, how much therapy, coaching, whatever, in certain situations, when we're triggered, we're going to be triggered. And my response is I freeze. I, I don't even know where to go. I don't know what to do with it because it feels it's, it's literally paralyzing for me at times. And so, um, but I will say that the thing that's been really helpful to me is that now, because I'm, I'm familiar with it, fortunately, in a sense, I'm like, I can, I can name it. I'm like, oh, there it is. There she is. There's the anxiety. There's the fear. There's the, whatever emotion it is that I'm having. I'm like, oh, and I can kind of separate myself. I learned this from Lennon Doyle's podcast a couple of weeks ago, and I shared this. And I feel like in, in that space, I'm, I'm grateful that I've been able to hone this skill where I can separate myself and feel like I'm managing that emotion a little bit better. And I'm not perfect. It's part of my journey. It's going to be lifelong, all that stuff. But to know now that I have this that I have the skill and I have the the tools, like, okay, I can implement that. Um, Sometimes, and there will be some days that I do better than others. That's my journey, right? Yeah. I'm feeling so, so much empathy. Uh, Sorry to interrupt you. I Just know. like, that we're talking about our scared animals, you know? We're talking about that part of us that can get scared. Mine gets so hurt, it'll fight. But if I could just say I'm hurt, that's a better it's a better route that I'm trying to use these days. It's kind of like, ouch, instead of teeth and, you know, <laughs> fangs. <laughs> um, but I'm just really appreciating that we <laughs> will continue this in another convo. The scared animal in us and how it operates. I, you know, those two words, I'm hurt, are really powerful words. Like just imagine in whatever situation one of us might be in where we're hurt and we express that. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really hurt right now. There's nothing to do except to receive those words, hopefully for the person across listening to us to receive those words in a loving way. Um, but I'm, I'm just imagining myself saying that to a person who will not be named um, and, and, and saying, look, this is, this has been my experience and I was hurt in the situation. So I, yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm processing it as I'm sharing this and I'm like, okay, I, I kind of know my next step with X, Y, Z. So. Yeah. And I get curious too, right. Naming it. Like it's such a skill in real time to name. Oh, there I go. I'm, I'm, I think I want to go back into my shell, right, <laughs> Peter? Um, oh, I, I really want to go back into my shell. I'm scared, but I'm sitting here with you, but I, you know, I'm getting pulled over there. Like, what would happen if we could name it? Because the, the vulnerability is like oddly rewarding with the right people. Yeah, we and, are limited by language though, you know? at times so yeah. sometimes actions that's another maybe masculine you know there's feminine then it has nothing to do with male female right but it's masculine energy taking action you know fixing yeah sometimes yeah it, it's it's positive but we can also be limited at mm -hmm. times with just just language so yeah right hmm. I Good agree. I hear, I hear some care instructions on the horizons. Like, what do we do when we're hurt and how can we be handled like lovingly? Yeah. Right. I personally need touch. Like Richard knows this. It's like, we can keep doing this, but my nervous system is going up. Mm -hmm. And so if he can just put like a hand on my shoulder and ground me yeah. so I can mm -hmm. slow down and I can breathe and I get the message unspoken that we're okay. Um, that's taken yeah. me years to figure out that's a big one that's a big one for me is in the midst of it all that touch indicates okay 
my my good friends Ira and Julia, they may be listening now. I admire them so much as a couple. They're not only incredible musicians, but they said something to me one day that really resonated. It was wonderful. And that was only one of us are allowed to be crazy at, at a time. <laughs> um, Good rule. I love that rule. <laughs> because, because we are all a little batty. And if you can really laugh at yourself, it's great. But what I love is that they had that, they had the foundation, that foundational piece in their relationship allowed for the reaching out, the touch, to say, it's okay, you can breathe right now. I still love you. Mm -hmm. we're, we're going through a moment. Yeah. But yeah. in the end, it's really, it's it's just a thing. Yeah. yeah. And in the end of the day, we're gonna we're gonna land in that soft place in the end of the day. We may not resolve this, but that's yeah, but I'm we're going to work it out. Like we'll, we'll find a way, even if it looks like a dumpster fire right now. Right. That's what I have <laughs> with my parents. I'm so, so lucky and grateful. My dad just turned 89. My mom just turned 80. And I have that with my parents. Like I have that. Mm -hmm. Like I know I can count on it. Yeah. They may not be, they may be listening now too. Uh, we may have different problem solving styles and ways of being in the world. I don't care. Love them, man. Like love them where they are. Period. Damn, Peter, that sounds like a class unto itself that I would love to take from you. <laughs> <laughs> Heidi, shall we pivot? We Rachel? shall. We shall pivot. So our chat pack question is. I chat love pack? It. Yeah, so they're just uh, ice breaking questions. So we, at the end of, I don't know if you, so at the end, we typically kind of do a 180 and ask some, ask right, a friend. Right, 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 right. Okay, what's the most embarrassing fashion trend you used to rock or have ever rocked? Rista, you wanna go first? <laughs> I did not have much fashion sense to have a fashion trend growing up, um, but I will say looking back my, all black goth uh black nails black lipstick black hair uh purple eye contacts um, oh my god <laughs> uh, i avoided the sun so i could stay my more more pale self um <laughs> wow <laughs> i'll try to find a picture but i would say my trying to be goth um and all that that entailed in terms of, uh, mind you, goth in Virginia. So let's just set context. Right. right. Um, yeah, I think, I, I wouldn't say embarrassing, but like that was certainly a look. Let's say. <laughs> How about you guys? Oh my God, I love that so much. Um, I had, I could have taken stock out in hairspray. Let me just say that in the eighties. So I had big hair like the bigger, the better bangs. And it was just, it, it was like a helmet. It didn't move because I had used so much hairspray. Oh my God. And it was all, it was the, it was the, it was, it, it was the cat's meow. I was like, I'm fitting in with everybody. Didn't matter. I, I just, I was. And, and because I naturally curly hair, you can imagine my hair was really big. So that's, and I will never rock that again, ever. I'm, it was like, when I look back, I think, oh my God, what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah. uh, You're totally stealing my thunder because <laughs> <laughs> mine was hair related. Go for it. Okay. It was just in my, it was, it was more forced upon me. So mom, if you're listening, that perm that you. Oh no. Back in the. Uh, age 15 let me tell you when you're in like ninth grade you shouldn't like give the, a, a ninth grade boy a perm and have him go into school the next day so I didn't really embrace that trend I actually I was mortifying it was like this big thing and it just it was so bad but one thing oh. I wrote yeah, that that was bad that was just it was just bad I'm my sorry mom, my mom just was totally she was jamming on that. She said, oh, you're going to love this. It's going to be great. 
I hated it. Oh anyway, it was like a God. good month before that thing wore off. Maybe yeah. two. <laughs> oh, no. That was I am, rough. I am but one so thing I, I, I rocked personally in my latter years, like teens and like 20s, was the bandana. I probably did that into my 40s. I was very bit. So I would say I still embrace that. So. Yeah, you can rock the bandana and the tie dye. The perm, we we send our condolences because that's rough. <laughs> oh my god, I <laughs> look at Heidi's face. I am just, I am astounded that a mother would do that. I, I just. She's so great. I love her dearly. It's just that was uh, a. a it was the seventies. It was the seventies. Yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm a little bit older than you, but I'm, I'm very aware of the seventies, Peter. I was, I was alive. <laughs> Wait. Oh my goodness. Anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a guest with us today, for your open heart, for your love, for your care, for your vulnerability. We, uh, and just bring it. And we, I'm sure I'm going to speak for Fadista when I say this, but I want to bring you back. Oh, if you're, if, you. if, no, Amen. seriously. If you're willing to do it, I, I personally would love to have you back. Same. um it's been just delightful yeah your presence is delightful yeah agreed agreed i feel the same way about both of you i'm honored yeah. to uh, that you both invited me to be here thank you We're honored to have you peter yeah and hang tight as we close because we'd love to thank you offline too so audience thank you for joining us today and um hanging in there if you have any questions feel free to pop them in the comments email us, YouTube us, you can find us in the various places. Subscribe if you like, share with your friends, the more the merrier. Until next time, everyone. Bye. Bye.